Okay, now it should work. Okay, let me know if you can now see my screen. I guess it's I guess it's working, and now we're gonna gonna start. Um, I'm sorry, I I should had my talk before uh, at the mid, uh, midday today, but there was some technical issues. That's why I'm starting my uh, my presentation now. I'm happy to introduce myself. My name is Anna Agua. I'm a co-founder and partner of Lex Law Office, the law firm based in Tallinn, Estonia, which is a very small country in the European Union. And basically, we are helping our clients from fintech, blockchain and IT industry with the legal issues also, I'm a co-organizer of CryptoFin Conference that was in uh, October 2018 in Tallinn. And today um, I'm going to talk about how crypto projects work with the wide world in which no one expects them and adapt to the regulation. So first of all, I would like to start with the numbers um, to imagine how, uh, how big is the crypto industry. Uh, crypto market was valued at 856,000 um, billions in year 2018 and it's projected to display a very robust growth of 12% uh, within the next five years. So imagine 856 billions. If we're going to talk about Germany, the, for example, um, Germany financial budget for uh, current year 2020 was 360 billion. So actually, uh, you can understand how valuable is the crypto market. If, you, if we're going to talk about the usability of the cryptocurrencies, then according to the statistic data, by the end of uh, March 2020, we have 47 million of crypto wallet users. You can imagine it's actually the population of the Spain. And around 3.6 million of people um, are active users, so cryptocurrency users who are using cryptocurrency for everyday life. And important to notice that 30% of the uh, wallet users are holding cryptocurrency for investment proposals. So actually, they uh, believe that cryptocurrency will grow and um, uh, the industry will go up. And you may ask Anna where cryptocurrencies are mostly used. Uh, as you can see, according to this chart, um, it's Asia, Asia Pacific area. Even uh, if in, in, in the China, cryptocurrency is not allowed according to the, to the law. On the second place, it's Asia Europe. And according to the researchers, around 40% of Americans are actually open to a, an idea to use bitcoins uh, for everyday transaction. And it actually shows that they are ready to use alternative payment methods and cryptocurrencies are welcome. And to prove that uh, crypto industry is growing very fast, I will, I will sharing with you the information about the number of the transactions. Uh, in 2019, in June 2019, the amount of the transaction on blockchain was 880 uh, million, and today it's around 580 million. So the growth was around 20%. So as you may understand, the huge potential of the market um, shows that actually it should be regulated to um, to provide the uh, to provide the um, some kind of of regulatory framework for the market players. And I will going to share with you some interesting examples of uh, regulation or how regulation is impacting the industry. The first one is uh, Libra case. Of course, uh, I guess you have heard about the Libra. Libra is a stable coin uh, issued by, uh, by Facebook. 
And according to this, um, in the end of 2019, European Commission confirmed that there is no place for the stable coins as Libra, because actually regulatory framework is not ready for this. And Stable coins as Libra, global stable coins, are not allowed in the European Union. But, of course, the European Commission already confirmed that they are working on the uh, regulatory framework for the global stable coins. The second sample is also absolutely interesting. Uh, it's, it's coming from, from US and according to the uh, financial um, According to FCO report, uh, they confirmed that stable coins are a risk for the world economy and monetary system. And they gave a recommendation to the financial regulators, uh, regulators to uh, review the existing uh, digital asset arrangements and understand the risks. The next absolutely awesome case that i would like to share with you i guess you will like it it's actually also um, from from the end of 2019 so it was wasn't happened like five or ten, ten years ago it's just uh, happened in december 2019 and um it's from it's from denmark and this sample is about the Nordian bank which is actually the biggest bank in the Scandinavia. And according to this, Nordian Bank wins the Danish court battle with the employees and got the right to bond there for the trading and investment in the cryptocurrencies. This actually is showing that traditional bank banks are not ready to be in any case related with the cryptocurrencies and they think that it may impact uh, their reputation and even for the employees uh, they decide not to allow allow to use the cryptocurrencies for trading or investment and one one more interesting sample um, about the Robin Hood which is crypto currency trading platform, one of the biggest, uh, they decided to apply for the banking license in US, um, prepared all needed documentation. This is not an easy process to, to be honest, but after some months, they withdraw their application. And actually, this situation shows two aspects. The first one that the cryptocurrency uh, market um, players are not really Mm, uh, able and ready to join the very regulated market for financial services and the second that actually US regulator is is not also very open for the uh, crypto projects to give the financial license to, uh, to them to provide uh, financial services. So the main problems in the in this industry, in my opinion, are uh, are the following. The first one, the relationship with the traditional banks. It is not um, a big uh, surprise for the market players that it is a big problem to open a bank account for the companies who are operating with the cryptocurrencies or has any any blockchain project because uh, cryptocurrency service providers for the traditional banking are a high risk clients and not all banks are ready to work with them. The second one uh, is the cross-border regulation and the lack of regulation. At the moment, we do not have absolutely clear regulation for every country. Even if you're talking about the legal term for the cryptocurrency, there are different and different mm, different de definitions for this. So if you will have the crypto project and you would like to provide your services globally, you will see a lot of uh, problems with the cross border regulation. We have some countries where cryptocurrencies are not allowed at all. We have some countries where it's very straight and clear regulation, very um, simple, um, obtaining requirements for the licensing for the licensing and we have 
also country where is no regulation at all. So it's actually um, a big problem for the for the market uh, players because basically they are, would like to provide their services globally. The third one is that not all market players are actually ready to be compliant. As was a Robin Hood sample, there are some other samples that um, cryptocurrency service providers, they are, very, they are basically very technical people and they are not ready to enter to the very strictly regulated um, financial uh, world. The third one is the negative produces an attitude like uh, uh, crypto is related to illegal purposes. Uh, it's also a big problem for the crypto adoption, um, as was the sample with Nordian Bank. There is no actually any um, any basics or any realities uh, for, for for this attitude, but it's it's still uh, like this. And um, of course, market uh, players should to fight with this. And the fifth one is more about government and government authorities is actually the fear that virtual assets will damage the current monetary uh, system. So, OK, you may ask, OK, how we can survive, how we can adapt and what can uh, crypto project service providers actually do? My recommendations are the current. The first one, choose the supportive jurisdiction for your project, because we we are really are having some jurisdictions who understand that blockchain technology is um, absolutely innovative and it is a future and they do accept that cryptocurrency it's, uh, is not only like a legal um, opportunity to uh, finance uh, criminal activities. The second one is to be compliant. I really believe that is the only way if you want to grow with the company is to be compliant. You need to understand the current regulation, you need to have a uh, um, very competitive uh, IML officer. You need to understand the, the GGPR rules because basically all the cryptocurrency service providers are working with the personal data. And you need to have a license and be um, like a liable person for the um, regulators in, in the particular country. The third one is to build a transparent and a long-term uh, long relationship with the banks. It is important to really find a transparent banking partner for your project and to provide them all information about your business project to explain who will be your uh, customers, which, with which geos you plan to work with, what will be the volumes, what will be the main clients and so on and so forth. And for example, if your company um, at open the bank account and you are planning some changes in the structure, uh, you need to inform in advance your, your bank, your banking service providers. So you need to accept all the rules that have been all the time in the financial, in the financial world, financial market for several years. The third one is to operate, to cooperate with the regulators. I really believe that actually, um, market players can teach the regulators and can have a conversation with them to really improve their regulation and to find some kind of um, uh, some kind of um, working working experience together because basically if we are talking about the countries where it's not really popular uh, cryptocurrency services, uh, the regulators do not have any experience with uh, regulating them. But if the market players will be able to teach the regulator and explain the needs of the, of the market players, then I believe that uh, the cooperation will be better. And the fifth one is quite similar to the previous, but of course it's lobby. Uh, the market players should uh, 
participate the conference, round tables, answer to the surveys, and explain uh, the business model of the project to be transparent and open for the conversation with regulators and other government authorities. And let's move to the positive uh, samples or positive things um, uh, showing that actually traditional um, traditional businesses and uh, government authorities are open to um, accept cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. And uh, I would like to mention Deutsche Bank. They announced that they really believe that cryptocurrency can um, uh, become very popular within the next uh, two years. Why? Uh, because of two projects. Uh, the first one is the digital uh, Chinese yen, and the second one is Libra. With Chinese yen, yen uh, project, it should bring 1.5 billion uh, Chinese uh, citizens, and with the Libra project, expected to bring 2.5 billion uh, Facebook users. So together, it will give like a half of our world population together. So you can imagine that actually if it happens, it, this kind of adaption will impact the life of every one of us. And also Deutsche Bank said that they believe uh, that um, uh, the forces that helped, uh, have held the current fight system together now look for Gil and they could unravel in 2020s. And if so, that will start to lead a, uh, lead to a backlash against fiat money and demand for alternative currencies such as gold and cryptocurrency. And of course, I would like to share with you examples that uh, um, central banks, countries and leading companies are actually very interesting in cryptocurrency. They believe that the future is there and they plan to uh, issue, for example, their, their own virtual assets. The countries like Iran, Saudi Arabia, Dubai, Peru and European Union are working on this. Also, the companies, as I mentioned before, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Telegram, also working on this. And if we are talking about the banking, for example, a good, a good example is um, Union Bank AG, which is Liechtenstein Bank, who already in August 2018 announced that they are regulated uh, financial institution, regulated bank, but they plan to um, issue their own stable coin. Uh, also, banking guides and payment companies like JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, Square Circle and Skrill uh, believe in growth of cryptocurrency and uh, will offer cryptocurrency service to their clients. And I'm super excited about JP Morgan case. Um, and according to this, in February 2020, so this year, they announced that they will uh, planning to launch their own cryptocurrency to provide instant settlement payments for the corporate um, uh, for the corporate or business clients. And for me, it actually shows that absolutely absolute banking gains are ready to enter to this industry, and they are not. Um, any, any more afraid about the um, negative impacts um, from, from the regulators. And I would like to summarize my presentation with uh, Bill Gates' words. Bitcoin is the technological to the force. And I really believe it in this, even I'm a lawyer and not a really a technical girl. Uh, but as I'm in this industry, I really believe that we will be impacted by this and it will be a positive impact. So if you want, you, if you want to contact me and uh, if you have any legal issues, you can find my details here. And now I'm going to back to the platform and check your questions to answer. Okay. Okay, any questions? Okay, I see one first one from Lena. 
A personal question, do you keep at least parts of your savings in crypto? Which ones? Okay, this is very interesting question. Uh, of course, for me as a um, crypto enthusiast, it's important to be a part of this industry and I'm holding uh, my savings in crypto as well. Um, if you would like to know which one, I, I can say that it's, it, it consists of different cryptocurrencies. And uh, of course, if you plan to, uh, to invest in cryptocurrencies and buy cryptocurrencies for investment proposals, then please uh, make sure that it's safe because um, the wallet will, should be absolutely safe because there is still a lot of problems with this. Any other question? Okay, here is a um, uh, CO2 impact of Bitcoins. Um, I'm not really, um, how, how I'm not really professional to come, com, com, uh, to give um, any feedback, feedback regarding this, but in, in the industry, um, basically is saying that it is not a big problem because uh, the impact is not so dramatic for our environment. So um, it is not an, um, a reason why to not use, for example, cryptocurrencies. Let me check any questions more. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Actually, we are quite on time. Thank you so much for your attention. I will uh, leave my LinkedIn contacts over here as well. So you can contact me if you have any, uh, any questions. Let me share it. Um, one second. Yes. There you go. Okay. <laughs> One moment, please. I will share it. Okay. Okay, here is a link for my uh, LinkedIn. Okay, thank you so much for your attention. Hope you will enjoy other sessions as well. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you, bye-bye.